Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's dialysis is going smoothly. Um, if you are on dialysis or if you have a loved one doing dialysis, I hope it's going smoothly for them. I had my treatment yesterday and I have to say the treatments are going a lot smoother here lately, knock on wood. But I hope they just keep going this way. It's, it's hard telling. You have a lot of ups and downs with dialysis it's a pain in the butt i did something to my bicep yesterday i was sitting on my walker and i kept dozing off and my i fell and my arm hit my it hit the the handle on the walker and it hit right in the center of my bicep and that thing is uh, you can't really tell but it is swollen up big time and just sore sore i can't even put my arm uh, my uh what's called my uh, blood pressure cuff on there without it hurting pretty bad hoping that'll go away before uh tuesday but today being sunday hopefully it'll heal up a little bit before then because i got my treatment and of course i have my blood pressure cuff taking constant blood pressures throughout the treatment anyway i like i said i hope everybody's doing well when i first started dialysis with about 19 years ago i was terrified going uh, you know being told that your your kidneys are al already gone enough that you need dialysis just to stay alive it was terrifying enough Especially when you're somebody like myself, I was very fit. Always went to the gym. And I was just a workout fanatic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I uh, everything went real smooth, I guess. I, uh, I went with the peritoneal dialysis option. Because I didn't want to mess with needles so much, I knew I was going to be getting my blood drawn a lot, but that didn't really bother me so much it was the needles that they use at dialysis I had seen how large they were and I didn't want to mess with that and when I saw that they could put a catheter in my stomach I could do it all myself I definitely went that route and I did very well with it for uh, several years I would do dialysis for I'd say about a year, and then every now and then they'd give me a, a week, and sometimes two weeks, off of dialysis completely. I still had some residual function then. Well, I got peritonitis. Oh, I'm trying to think. I can't, I can't remember how long I'd been doing dialysis. I'd already been doing it for several years. But the girl I was dating had cats and she smoked in her apartment. And really, I had no right telling her what to do because it was her place. And I was taking the risk by living there. And of course, I did get peritonitis and they said it was from the cat dander and the uh, cigarette smoke, obviously. I moved out. We broke up. Uh, we long well it wasn't really a long story just wasn't working out anyway I moved in with my parents and around 2010 at this point in time I had been on the transplant list for about five years well they finally called me the first time they called we drove to Dallas which is about two hours from where I live we got there, we waited, and we waited. They drew a ton of blood. They were testing to see if if it was a, a, a really, you know, like a perfect match, basically. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, they had us leave. We went out to eat. They called us. We came back, and they told me that I was basically the backup at that time, and the person ahead of me, it matched so they got the kidney and then that that was over so we went home 
and may, it was maybe a week, maybe two later, I got another call. And this time, they told me I was going to get this kidney. Well, we, we waited. They drew a ton of blood like they did before. But this time, they actually put me in a room. And we stayed the night. I was told I was going to receive the kidney the next morning. Well... We're waiting, we're waiting. Can't eat breakfast, cause you know I'm, in, uh, you know, no food or water or no or liquids or anything. You know, of course how it is before surgery. No lunch, no dinner. I say the night again. Next morning, nothing. And. Uh, Finally, uh, I would say it was it was after lunch, definitely. They finally take me back, and they do the transplant. And after that, it was just, oh, a nightmare. They are saying that my kidney's working, so I'm getting excited. But I'm putting out less and less urine. At first, they're like, oh, you got the urine coming out, the kidney's working. And I told them I, I was putting out quite a bit of urine already. So, how can you tell by that? Anyway, they did a ton of biopsies. And they're really not telling me a lot this whole time. The nurses are telling me more than the doctor. He starts to try to avoid me, which I thought was very strange. And then, finally, they did another biopsy, and they did plasmapheresis, and that was, it was frozen plasma that they put in me, and my body went into shock, and uh, it was terrible, it was just a nightmare. Well, my friend, my best friend was up there with me at the time, uh, Sean, and he heard them say, well, I asked the doctor, is this kidney going to work? I mean, just tell me flat out. Is is it going to work or or what? What's going on? The doctor told me there was a 99% chance that this kidney would work. So I got excited again. I was like, okay, I'm really weak. I'm struggling, but it's going to be worth it. Well, I have a wound back on at this time. I forgot to mention, as soon as they did the transplant, I'd always heard that they want to get you up as quickly as possible and get you walking. Well, as soon as I got at, out of recovery and back to my room, I got myself up and I and I was walking down the hall. And the nurses are like, what are you doing, Mr. Pets? And I felt a warm gush go down my legs. And what had happened was the incision had busted open the staples had busted open and it was just pouring out it was it was nasty well they rushed me back to the room and they proceed to put staples back in and there wasn't much numbing i <laughs> i came unglued it hurt so bad well that's when they put the wound back on and so I have this, I'm carrying this wound back around that's, you know, pulling out the, the uh, toxins because basically I had a developed staph infection. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was, it was a nightmare. They did two more sessions of plasmapheresis. And one of those, I actually coated, flatlined. Of course, wasn't out long, but. Yeah, flatlined. And I ended up doing that uh, more than once while I was in the hospital. Anyway, they did thymo. Uh, I'm not sure the full name of it again, but my body did not do well with that. It felt like somebody was just splitting my head with an axe. I was projectile vomiting. It was a nightmare. It was hilarious, though, because my dad who did not leave my side the whole time. He was sleeping because they were doing the thymo at night because it, 
it lasted, I think it lasted eight hours. So the, the idea was for me to sleep during this treatment. Of course, I didn't get any sleep because I'm <laughs> like the exorcist, pro projectile vomiting and just, oh, terrible pain. Meanwhile, my dad's over, <laughs> it was a large room. He's over on his pullout bed sleeping. <laughs> the next morning, the nurses finally got everything cleaned up. And everything's calming down, and I'm about to fall, I'm about to fall asleep finally, and get some rest. And Dad's stretching, and he says, "Hey, Joe, did you get some good sleep last night?" And I was like, and the nurses looked at him, and they were like, "No, uh, it was a nightmare last night." They told him what happened, and he, we were all laughing. I mean, what else can you do? It was pretty funny. I can't believe he slept through that. It was like World War Three in there. <laughs> but anyway, that was my experience with the transplant. I was in the hospital for three months. Three months. And they had to remove the kidney. I went home with a wound vac and the nurse, a uh, home health nurse had to come to my house three days a week and change the... Um, that that it was taped shut my wound and basically what that wound back does is it heals the incision from the inside out and eventually they don't they, they stuff a sponge down in you and then they tape it and they, oh gosh taking that tape off was just a nightmare every time i was so glad when that healed and it was done with that but my transplant, not a good experience. They're not always what they tell you it's going to be. I mean, they make it sound like transplant, you get a kidney, everything's great. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it does work and people have a, a new lease on life. But unfortunately, my situation, it did not work. I do want to try again. It took me several years to basically change my mind, but I'm just so tired of dialysis. It, dialysis sucks, but it's keeping me alive. So I'll keep doing it. Unfortunately, right now, they told me that I am not eligible for a, a kidney transplant. I have to find out what's going on with my heart, my liver first, and then hopefully after everything's fixed, I can get back on the transplant list. But I just want everybody to know that's on dialysis, if you're going smoothly, let's say you're on peritoneal, peritoneal dialysis and everything is going smoothly, you might want to just stay on that because transplant could turn out being really bad anyway guys that's all for now uh, if you have any questions be sure to either write me at pets effects at gmail.com that's p-e-t-z-f-x at gmail.com or just write me here on youtube on the comments and i will get back to you and let you know as best I can with whatever whatever questions you have if you want to just say hi that'd be great just please like and subscribe and share I would sure like to be able to help people if I can I've been through a lot been doing this 19 years I feel like I know quite a bit about about the whole process might not put it in professional terms. I put everything pretty simple. But yeah, guys, I, I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.